7.07 a.m. here on KFYO Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. It is 76 degrees on this Friday, June 23rd, and as publicized and advertised, we have City Councilman Steve Massengale. Good morning, Steve. Hey, good morning. Great to see you guys. So, uh, glad to have you here. Of course, yesterday, I guess, was the big City Council meeting, and there's a lot uh, on the agenda. Well, there was. I mean, I think the thing that's... uh, uh, caught most people's attention and uh, was most anticipated was um, the, the anticipation of the what we call the GMP and in uh, layman's terms that's a guaranteed maximum price from our contractor and uh, we have a facilities committee uh, formed inside the council which I serve as chair Mayor Pro Tem Joy serves on that and Councilman Griffith serves on that and so we spent several hours on this this week and much to our dismay, because we want to see construction start on that project, it's been a long time coming, we made a decision to postpone one more meeting before we approved that final price, which would then trigger construction on the tower. Hmm. Uh, and, and the purpose of that is? Well, as we met with our construction manager, who is Lee Lewis Construction, and our architects are Perkins and Will out of Dallas, we determined that they had not had adequate time to assess all the bids involved in the process. And so it's they couldn't deliver us complete information, therefore we didn't have the confidence to come out to the public to say this is going to cost X. Mm-hmm. And so we felt like we asked them if, if, if they could – if they needed more time to do their work and they said yes and although we made a commitment that we take very seriously that we told the public we'd have this done by june 22nd and um we don't have it done and i i think that's uh uh disappoints all of us but there's so much time money and effort invested in this this project at this point three weeks is not going to make a difference this is going to be a massive project isn't it yeah, it's massive. It's complex because you're 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 making a new building out of an old building, right? And so that makes it even more complex. Do we know yet? Just is this some kind of a ballpark figure of what this? What yeah, we're we, talking about. We know. So, the council prior to when I got on the council went ahead and sold bonds. They had made a determination that they thought they could do this project within about sixty-two million dollars. You know, what we're shooting for is somewhere around the $42 million, give or take, for the construction of the tower. But those are the rough numbers we're dealing with. Mm. Do we know yet uh, who, what city agencies, parts and pieces are going to move over there? Well, everything will move over there. That's the goal. That's the intent of the tower is to get everybody together. So, you know, you've got the, the departments that won't be in there that we know won't be in there after we open will be police fire and health and we think it's appropriate for them to be out obviously they they have and we've got we've talked about plans for police but uh pretty much everybody else will eventually end up in the tower you know parks and rec isn't with us today it isn't with us today um fire marshal is out um so we're our goal is to get all consolidate all those including lpnl that, you know they're in a separate building as well, and they'll be all together in the tower. So, how many buildings are we talking about that that are going to be consolidated? I mean, how many buildings do we have throughout Lubbock for oh, for this? I don't know the answer to that. Um, be there's at least three. I know that what we would do is, for example, and I think this is important, is we would there will be some buildings going back on the tax roll. So. Uh, you know, there, there's kind of two dual plans working on facilities here. Facilities committee has a lot of work going on, but the LPNL building for sure. You know where LPNL is downtown. Mm-hmm. That's going to you're going to see a for sale sign go up on that building. Okay, we're going to sell that to somebody, put it back on the tax roll. Um, there's a lease building that Parks and Rec is in uh, that that would eventually uh, go away. Um, and then you start looking, checking off the boxes on the PD side uh, whenever we, we finalize our, our police plan. I think we anticipate Municipal Square uh, being sold. And associated with that is uh, police property room that would be sold. So several buildings. Okay. And then as far as the cost you're looking at, $42 million, does that include the parking garage? And have we no. had any estimates on that yet? Okay. Great question on the parking garage. So... Uh, the original plan was to refurbish the par- parking garage. 
Uh, since then, the engineers have come in and taken a look at it, and then we start seeing early estimates, and it kind of knocks you out of your chair. You're like, well, how much to do that parking garage? And what we determined is the uh, parking garage is beyond repair. It's, it's not worth spending uh, dollars on. So right now, and, and, and that would come out of the tower budget. Well, then it's going to have to come down, isn't it, if you're not? Exactly. It's got to come And that's down. a large cement structure. I'm guessing it's going to be expensive to bring it down. Yep. It's, uh, it's got to come down. It's, uh, I mean, we literally have, so we have pictures of the, in, the, some of the contractors driving up the ramps in, internal to that, and their truck fell through the ramp. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's old concrete. It wasn't sealed properly. It's not been used for several years. Standing water and concrete don't mix well. Mm. And so it's, it's just not going to work. And so we're going to handle the tower, and then we're going to handle the, um, the garage. We're going to include the demo of the garage is, is going to fall within this tower budget that we're talking about. Uh, and right now we're looking at options on what does parking look like. Is it another tower? Um, we're looking at uh, we're, we're we're weighing all those options to determine where. But that doesn't that, that doesn't slow down the project. We can get the tower started and make our decisions on parking, and we, we should be fine. Okay. Well, I was driving down um, down the road right beside Citizens Tower, and so. across the street to the uh, east, mm-hmm. they're tearing something down. Do you okay. know, do you right. know what's going on there? Yeah, the city owns that property as okay. well. That's the old chamber building. Okay, and um, that's part of our plan. Uh, uh, you know, we made one recommendation uh, early on when we made reference to police facilities. Uh, as we address police facilities, we've got to address municipal court. And there's one thought, and we've looked at one option of putting municipal court on that corner, uh, but we're still evaluating that. But yes, that's the city owns that. Okay, and, and the city removed that, and that cost of that removal falls within this tower budget. Okay, um, so I know that that you came forward with a plan. I think last city council for the police, yeah, looking, about, about a month was or it two, so, or two ago? maybe six weeks ago now. Okay, yeah, yeah. and uh, looking at the that's right, we didn't have anybody last time, did we? Uh, no. Okay, but um, <clears throat> you're looking at doing uh, uh, spreading the police out now, possibly. Yes. Okay, and so do we? Do we have a cost on that, and what it's going to look like? Or are we still looking into that right now? So we are. Uh, so just to remind your listeners, um, we've made a recommendation. It has not been considered or voted on by council. Facilities committee has made a recommendation that we move to the community policing model. Three substations. It's long been known that we need an admin building. Uh, we've got a police property warehouse issue we've got to address. And then as we move out of Municipal Square, which we know has got a number of issues, like I mentioned earlier, we've got to move Municipal Court. We have rough estimates. I mean, we, we, we think that's anywhere from um, 50 to a 65 maybe $70 million project real loose estimates so you don't 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 hold me to one end or the other but uh and one of the one options and then the next you know you've got to ask how are you going to finance that and uh one of the options is a bond and um yes a bond would uh impact taxes i believe a bond in that range impacts the average tax uh average homeowner like 40 dollars a year but I feel strongly that if we get to that point, citizens ought to participate in the process. Yeah. So that decision has not been made. It's just a recommendation. Um, you could take, you could finance that with COs, uh, but then you would um, that would also impact the tax rate. So, again, I think once we finalize this GMP on Citizens Tower, that you'll see us making some final recommendations. Uh, on police. Okay. And do we have a timeline of what we're looking at for, you know, when we're going to be seeing something with the police? Yeah. I mean, I think you're going to see it within a month to six weeks at the most. Mm-hmm. Okay. A lot of changes be, uh, being made. The city. Uh, it's 717 now here on KFYO Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. 
Uh, we're talking and visiting with uh, Councilman Steve Massengale, and we will return with more in just a moment. It is 7.23 a.m. here on KFYO Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin, and 76 degrees outside, shooting for a high today of 92. And again, we carry on our conversation with uh, City Councilman Steve Massengale. Smart meters. What do you know about smart meters, and how smart are they? Now, Matt, he's... Advanced de- metering? He's, yeah, he is definitely Advanced against... Advanced metering? Matt is definitely against I'm, smart meters. I'm he, not he believes that they're going to scan meters. his thoughts. I do not believe that. I think that I. I <laughs> well, what's I'm your issue him, with them? I, I I personally don't have an issue with smart meters. Uh, my my point is that there are people with issues. There to are smart there meters. are there are people with and it's because with th- issues. It's because of states like California mm-hmm. who want to control every little aspect of what you do with your home. Including uh, and the smart meters, a lot of times I don't know about the ones that Lubbock have, but they can connect with the appliances in your home and give you a readout of what's using what, and then that gives the state of California and other states telling oh. you exactly what you're using. We haven't had any discussions about that. I, I'll just tell you my position on advanced metering is that I support them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this is a device. I mean, I don't know how you can't if you're going to use this. I don't know how you can't support smart metering. Um, well, because they read your brain waves. Well, I mean, if you want to have the privacy <laughs> argument about them, I mean, I don't know what's worse. I mean, uh, we're, we're going to monitor your usage, and you can monitor your usage, or we can send, send a guy down the alley with a pair of binoculars to look at the back of your house once a month. So what really is an invasion of privacy? Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, this is a tool that is efficient. It helps us on manpower. It, I mean, it helps LPNL on manpower. It gives you the ability to, that if you want to manage your household budget even more on your utility consum- your electric, uh, your energy consumption, you can set it. And you'll get a notice on, on, on your phone say, Mr. King, you've used 75% of the, the, the energy that you intended to use this month. You know, you might back off a little bit. But we're, we're, we're headed. I mean, we... Uh, South Plains Electric Co-op has already been doing this for years. I haven't heard of anybody that's had an issue with uh, mind reading, but it works. <laughs> and uh, it's, it requires an investment. Everything requires an investment. But I think at the end of the day, it's the right thing to do. Well, it sounds like it is. But Matt doesn't usually bring up good questions, but he did bring this up, and, and I hadn't thought of it. Uh, okay, it's going to eliminate manpower. Obviously, you don't have to send a man around down the alleys reading electric meters. What about, does that, is that the same guy that reads the water meter? Yeah, so yes, that's a great question, and that's one of the big dilemmas with, with, with deploying this um, in, in our world because we own both. So, our, our so we still have to send a guy down to read the water meter. But there is a plan to put the smart meters in the water meters eventually, too. So that would know, require another meter, wouldn't it? Yeah, it, it it's a lot more work to put in a water meter than it is to plug right. in oh, a new I, electric meter. I can imagine. Problem. So you know, you'd phase that in, like you'd say, okay, maybe you'd start with all the new development, and then as water meters go out, so you'd have to phase that in. Yeah. So as far as that's concerned, though, it's also going to be uh, a much more accurate reading. You know, they apparently LPNL. I I don't. Didn't they have some issues with reading? We had some Lately. personnel issues, right. yes. And uh, so that that should take care of that issue because it's all going to be digital. Yeah, and the, the, the rollout on this is still quite some time, so okay. it's this is not happening tomorrow. What, what no. time frame are we looking at? Uh, Michael, I can't remember, but I, I want to say it takes three or four years. Yeah. Okay, well, I think you're safe, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, I'm no, sorry. No. What, what's that? Let's see. Um, so uh, the... the the state actually, I think a law from the state made it where um, the hotel possibility, uh, the private public thing that y'all are looking at doing, possibly with hotel downtown or with the civic center, mm-hmm. um, a, a law from the state made it where funding was more available for y'all. So it just allowed uh, the the legislature um, the the bill was passed that allowed us the ability that should we want to move forward with a public-private partnership on a convention center hotel that we could access, recapture the tax dollars it would pay for that okay. project. So it would just be tax dollars 
uh, we, we're going to have to come back and because and, uh, I want to talk some more about that. Uh, but we've uh, got a hard break coming up here in about 20 seconds. So this is KFYO Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin, and we're talking with City Councilman Steve Massengale, 728 a.m. We'll take this break and be back and talk more in just a moment. News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM. We are KFYO Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. 736 AM as you arise to 76 degrees outside. Visiting with Councilman um, Steve Massengale and talking about this public-private partnership that the city is proposing to um, be involved in building a hotel there on the on the uh, property, in, uh, I guess in walking distance of our Civic Center. It would be right on, it would be in the, the northeast corner, which would be just north of the library we were talking about mm-hmm. earlier, uh, directly across from, more or less, from the Buddy Holly Hall. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a great idea, but it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be complicated, apparently. Uh, between The city will own part of it, and then a, a private hotel chain will own the hotel part. Is, right. that, is that pretty much the way it... Yeah, well, let, let, let's remind your listeners, first of all, there's been no decision made on this. So... Um, what, what we've done is, uh, and many cities in Texas are all doing this, is work uh, uh, the, they've seen the legis- legislat- legislative piece move through Austin, and it's been approved to allow cities to move forward with this. And so if we choose to do this, it allows us to enter into a public-private partnership with um, somebody that's in the hotel business, and... Uh, recapture the hotel tax and the sales tax associated with the project. And with that money, the city would um, build a conference center that they would own adjoining the hotel that would help uh, expand the capacity of the the uh, civic center, which, you know, then, then it starts this debate is, is, a, is a civic center or a convention center. And uh, there are people on both sides of this, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I understand everybody's position, but this is one of those um, catalyst projects, in my opinion. We already have hotels that are ready to break ground in downtown Lubbock because of this hotel. Mm-hmm. This hotel helps to facilitate outside business, because I think as business owners – we're all about people coming in and spending money, are we You not? bet you. And this is one of those projects that increases people, getting more people in town to spend money. And we're kind of at that, we're, 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 we're kind of at a point with our, our civic center, maybe it's time we need to grow up and be a convention center because there are people that want to come to Lubbock. They want to bring their And we want them here, to come to Lubbock. And we want them to come here and spend their money. And it's this hotel that as people come in will overflow and begin to fill up the other hotels as conventions come in. But yeah. to attract those conventions, we need and, this piece. And you think that this would actually be self-funding? The, uh, well, by I, reclaiming. There's no other option on it. I mean – it, it, it's got them, yeah, the, but that's the intent, and, and cities all across Texas are, are, are looking at the same thing. Um, and I don't well, know if, how, if that's the case, that sounds like a no-brainer. Well, here, here would be the downside if you were going to you know, argue against it is the city would borrow the money, but we would pay, you, would, you would service the debt with this, this other, this you know, found or recaptured uh, sales tax hotel But only tax. enough money to build the convention part of the hotel part. Mm-hmm. Would be built by a hotel company. Yeah, majority of this is all still private money, and I think our project is even more so private money than some of the others we've seen. But yes, I can't re- remember all the dollars. Okay. I think it's a now, seventy million dollar project. But I want to move on to something you said during the break when we were talking uh, that I, that I have really a, a acutely attuned into is the explosion in growth in Lubbock. There's, it, it's I have not. I've been here fifty years, and I have not ever seen. Uh, the building is just crazy building going mm-hmm. everywhere. Hotels, apartment complexes, strip centers, residences. It's just they're building everywhere, and particularly in, in uh, what, southwest Lubbock, and that Milwaukee it's, uh, corridor. It, and It is. It's a 1585 what? or the new Loop 88. It's north Lubbock, too, nor- north and northwest yeah. Lubbock. It's, What's going on? You know, I think we have reached a point. And a lot of cities reach the point when they get uh, above 250,000 
people that you get on a continual roll. And I think Lubbock has always been that community that we never felt the highs of the highs or the lows of the lows of these economic roles. And we're not growing aggressively, but we're growing continuously. And 3% 3% of 250 is a lot different than 3% of 100,000. And so overall, our, 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 our growth is larger. But it's a great time to be in Lubbock, Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what and, I think. I've always said. I- and the growth, the, the we've got years of growth set in front of us right now. I mean, the, the, the folks wanting to spend money here, which is good for all of us, is, is, is huge and uh, – there's just a lot of great things going on. So I've, I've got about one, probably one, maybe two minutes left. And I've had a lot of people that have actually talked to me about Broadway. A lot of people are very worried about going from four lanes to two lanes. I know we've talked about these these smart streets. I've had others, other councilmen say that, that all, cool. the, all the things that they've looked at say that this is actually going to help, help mm-hmm. that. And that there's other possible streets planned. Are we going to at least see how Broadway works out as far as Texas Tech coming back, see how that works out before we start planning other streets? Yeah, no one's more interested in Broadway than me because uh, my business is at the corner of Broadway and University. Mm -hmm. Uh, I noticed yesterday that the stripes are gone going down Broadway. Uh, I'm glad to see bike access. I think that's important, especially in a university community. Um, So... Yet to be determined, I guess, but there's a lot of studies that back up that this works. Um, so, you know, it, 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 is, is science reality? I guess we'll, we'll, well, we'll, we'll see. But Well, but every, I guess my thought is every place is different. I mean, every city's different. And so um, I guess when I'm looking and what other people are worried about is, is this going to work in Lubbock specifically on such a road as Broadway that a lot of people use? I hope it does. Yeah. Uh, and I hope we see more of it. Well, uh, we were with the uh, the Texas Tech folks uh, this week, and or, or actually Michael Molina put, presented to us yesterday in work session. He's in charge of all the facilities at Texas Tech. And the mayor asked him, he goes, I hope to see y'all continue what we've done with the Complete Streets Project from Broadway on into campus. And they're doing some things with some um, – they call them co-used paths or something, you know, especially down 19th, what they're working on right now. But, uh, you know, that's the biggest, as a business owner down there, I can tell you that's the biggest concentration of pedestrian traffic in town. Well, and this this reminds me, it just dawned on me, uh, back in the Robinson administration, and I believe it was McDougal maybe that proposed this, about putting a trolley car from university and uh, on Broadway and having, having it run downtown in a loop. Mm-hmm. And around the depot district, and then back to service tech and all that area. That sounded like a great idea to me. Well, I, we have the the. I mean, there are we have a lot of people that live in that community down there that don't have cars. Yeah, you know, and uh, that's that's foreign to us. Did, is that proposal just gone away? Or? I haven't had a discussion about that proposal, so I, I would assume that that's well, not on the table. But it is. It is, I hate to cut you off, but it is 744, and there's the music, and we've got to take a break. Uh, Councilman Steve Massengill, thank you so much for coming out hey, and being with us this morning. Me. Anytime. We'll be back with more KFYL Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin after this. Bye.